We're gonna tie a little foam beetle here next. This fly is tied on a standard Tiemco dry fly hook. This is a Tiemco 100 SPBL, which is a little stouter than your usual dry fly hook. Um, and the reason I use this hook is that heavier wire will help to center this fly. This fly has a high center of gravity with the hump back on it. Uh, so we want a little heavier hook that will make sure that this fly always lands upright. The thread that we'll use is ADOT black, ADOT unithread, um, although 6-OT thread would be, work just fine here as well. Either one is, is appropriate. The body is going to be made out of black open cell fly tying foam. This is 1 8 inch thick and I've trimmed it to about as wide as the hook gap. And you can see I've cut the, the tip to just a little bit of a point there. The underbody is going to be peacock curl and the legs are going to be made out of moose hair. We're going to put a little indicator on the top of the fly just to make it a little easier to see and that's somewhat optional. Um, I like to have it on there. I figure I can always cut it off if need be but I like to have it on there because this fly is dark and can sometimes be a little hard to see. I try to keep a somewhat natural color, orangey or yellowy. Beetle, a lot of beetles will have some color on them so it's not completely out of whack to have a little bright spot tied in on the front. So to get started, I'm going to start the thread just a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye. I'm going to make a nice even thread base all the way back to the bend. And in this case, I'm going to violate one of the rules that I kind of live by. And that is I'm going to make the thread base go a little more beyond the bend. I'm going to wrap actually down the curve of the hook a bit. And then I'll bring the thread back up to my starting point or just short of my starting point. We're going to tie our foam in on top of the hook here and I'm going to wrap back over it all the way back to the end of this thread base. And the reason I'll do that again is to lower the center of gravity in the fly so it lands upright and sits upright on the water. So I'll take my piece of foam that I've trimmed here. And I'm going to catch that tapered end with the thread, get a couple turns on it and you can see that I've got that just a little bit off center on the hook so that my thread will center it as I wrap back over it. And I'm going to wrap back in wide increments back to the bend and then one turn down the bend. So I'm actually crept around the hook bend there just a little bit. And I'll come forward and anchor everything down tightly as I work back to the front of the hook. So we've got our foam anchored relatively far down the bend here. Now the next thing I'll do is I'm going to tie in a few strands of peacock hurl. And I'll use the bigger bushier hurls toward the bottom of a peacock eye or even strung hurl is fine for this use. I'll trim the tip end square. I'll tie these down on top of the foam and wrap back over them to the bend as well and return my thread to the front. Now I'm going to put a couple of legs in here on this fly and the easiest way I've found to do this is to use some moose hair but there's a little bit of a trick to doing this as well. I'm going to take six of these moose body hairs and you can see the the butt ends are very thick and the tip ends are very fine. What I'll do here is I'm going to take six of these hairs, try to get three in each hand here, and I've got the tips up on both of these. I'm going to oppose this so I've got three butt ends facing each direction. And what that's going to give me is a little more consistent leg diameter rather than having fat legs on one side and skinny legs on the other side. This is going to give me half and half on either side of the fly. I'm going to tie these in like spinner wings here at the front of the fly and I'm not all the way up to the starting point. I'm about two thirds of the way up the hook. So I'll tie that in with two turns of thread. I'll draw the near side toward me and go diagonal between them again to set those in at an angle. Now I'm going to lift these up and I'm just going to kind of give these a pr preliminary trim to make them a little easier to work with here while we wrap our peacock curl. I'll bring my thread up to just behind our index point. And now I'm going to wrap my peacock curl. Now sometimes as you wrap your peacock curl, these legs will get in your way. One way you can kind of get them out of the way is just draw them forward and put a turn of thread over them. That'll just hold them out of your way for the time being. Now I can wrap my peacock curl forward right up to the back side of the legs and then I'll release that turn of thread and put the legs back in place. I'm not going to go between the legs. I'm just going to keep wrapping the peacock around the hook to just short of the hook eye and I'll tie it off there. I've got one leg that doesn't want to cooperate. We'll push him back where he needs to go. And anchor that peacock curl down tight. I'll trim the stub ends. And now here I want to make sure I've got a nice smooth thread base over the front end of that peacock 
and the bare shank that we left at the front of the hook. Now I'm going to fold my foam forward and this is going to create the shell back on the fly. This foam is very buoyant and it's also very realistic when viewed from the top and the bottom. I'm going to pull this over the top and I'm not going to stretch it terribly but I do give it just a little bit of tension and I'll come over it with a loose wrap of thread. Notice that I haven't pulled the thread down tightly yet. I'll draw the thread toward me to tighten that loop to close it down on top of the fly and follow that up with two or three turns. You can see as I did that, that sort of spread the legs out in a little bit wider platform so we don't, we're not going to have to reposition everything there. I'm going to trim the front end of this foam just near the hook eye. So I've got a short little nub for a head. And you can finish this fly off right here, trim the legs down and fish it just as it is. But if you don't add the indicator, it can be a little hard to see. So what I've got here is a piece of two millimeter foam that I've just caught, cut into about a two by two millimeter strip. I'm going to lay this right in the notch where we tied the head down and I'll press it down with my thumb and I'll do that same maneuver, tightening the thread toward me to set that right in on top of the fly. Now when I whip finish, a lot of tires will whip finish right over this thread or the, the foam that we just put in. I'm going to jump the thread to just behind the hook eye. I like to whip finish on the hook wherever I can. I think it's just a, a better foundation to get a whip finish to really anchor in place there. So I'll get three or four turns there and I'll trim the thread off. Now the front end of this indicator I'll trim flush. The back end I'll trim a little longer and I'll leave it long. I can always shorten that on the water but I can't make it grow back. So I always leave it a little long, makes it a little easier to see if I need it. If I don't need it that tall I can shorten it when I'm out fishing. Now to trim the legs I'm just going to sweep all the legs down under the hook and I'm going to go just a touch longer than the hook gap. I'll press my finger up from the bottom to spread those legs out and that's our little foam beetle. <laughs>